speak of someone who always has an answer Eamon McEnany from Waterford Treasures there's nothing the man doesn't know uh, that's a fact good morning it's Eamon it's a big exaggeration good morning <laughs> Mary good morning Ollie again, good morning, morning listeners again Mary read that yeah. as you had written it so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <An email. laughs> that's you, you, you could clean up the old handwriting there for me Eamon next time yeah. <laughs> now sure. you, you are going to be talking about May Samson Too Good Roach no, Sa- Samson, Samson Too Good Roach Samson Too Good Roach that's what I said yeah. you said May Samson oh sorry yeah. oh I get you I get you sorry Samson yeah. Too Good Roach sorry Samson okay. Too Good okay. Roach yeah yeah. He was, he was born in 1759 and, and he lived to be 88 years but I suppose we all have photographs on our phones and on our green savers of, of our loved ones well 300 years ago people in Ireland and England if they had money enough they carried around little small pictures of their loved ones that were painted in, in, little, in little gold frames and if a man would keep maybe on the chain of his fob watch and a woman would wear them around her neck or as a brooch close to her heart so and, and sometimes there'd be locks of hair in the back of these plastered with the initials of who their loved one was it was very popular if you were going off to war you get one done but probably one of the greatest exponents of that art and making these miniatures and remember these are like less th- some of them are less than two inches they're painted on ivory with watercolours is a man called Samson Toogood Roach he was born somewhere in the Blackwater Valley the b- borders there between Yall and County Waterford and he- he's we claim him to be a Waterford man because he was buried in, in um, Ardmore Cemetery where, where the family plot was down a beautiful cemetery down in Ardmore and um, he lived in Woodbine Hill in his old in, in his old age uh, in County Waterford and the, the interesting thing about him was that he was deaf and dumb so he became probably one of the greatest miniature painters in Britain and Ireland in, in the in the late um, 18th and early 19th century and he, he he went off then to what was the most fashionable place at the time and like us all when we go on holidays we like to bring back a memento yeah and he decided that the city of Bath in England a few years earlier in, in the 1755 they discovered those Roman ruins that they're now making a fortune of as a t- tourist attraction they didn't know they were there until then so they archaeologically excavated all of these and they found these hot water springs and became fashionable for the wealthy people and Jane Austen went there and lived there for a few mm. years at exactly the same time as Samson Tugel Roach was there and he took himself off to Bath and all the, the wealthy people who come on their holidays basically to take the waters there the mineral waters there he painted them and he made an absolute fortune and he brought another guy with him Charles Byrne because he wasn't anywhere as accomplished as Samson Tugwood Roach and of course he did a lot of because the, the man couldn't speak or hear um, he, he did a lot of the negotiations of course on the price and he, he made himself a small fortune isn't that extraordinary yeah. and what a particular yeah. talent this miniature painting mm, it's, it's, yeah you it know, is that's uh, something really you special. need a very steady hand wouldn't you oh no, you do oh yeah because mm. they're tiny and mm. they're really beautiful the detail mm. them is beautiful uh, and the other lovely thing about them is uh, I don't know if people some of your listeners might notice them they're about 30 years ago I was asked to suggest something to go on the city square shopping centre on the ceramics you know there's mm. tiles yeah. and panels there and, and there's lovely images of um, treats Street sellers like selling fruit and fish and vegetables. Vendors, and, yeah, uh, yeah, ve- yeah, yeah, ve- vendors and people get, getting onto ferry boats and things like that. And when he came back to Waterford in his in his old age, he lived as I said one by Hill in County Waterford. Uh, he 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 travelled around Dungarvan and Waterford City, and these are unique in Ireland. And he painted ordinary people. Obviously, he didn't do it for money. And he has this beautiful, beautiful book of these drawings. Unfortunately, it's, it's not in Waterford or Dublin. It's, it's, it's in the Ulster Museum and that they look after it very well. And they've done several exhibitions on it. And they just show the ordinary people of, of Waterford just before the famine. There is no other collection wow. of, of drawings showing how they dressed and yeah. behaved. And he did these. And, and some of them are from Dungarvan and some of them are here in Waterford City. Uh, the, their views of Dungarvan and Waterford City. Excellent. So very important it's, it's, body it's of It's a lovely work. thing to have, yeah, for Waterford. Yeah. So we're very but, lucky to have a man of his, of his caliber very a Watford man. Very yeah. quickly, Eamon, can I just ask you, how did he get the name Samson Too Good Roach? Too Good is the surname, yeah. Roach was, was his it? mother's name. Uh, yeah, okay. They used to spell it R-O-C-H, yeah. yeah. They didn't use the E. But then in those days, they spelled their name whatever way they liked. How did they spell the Too Good? T-W-O, yeah, the other way around. Right. Then you think, yeah. 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 Excellent yeah. stuff. Yeah. Listen, yeah. So, uh, Eamon, uh, thank you so much uh, yeah. for that. We will put it online as we always do. And we'll talk great to you Monday. Yes. Have a great have weekend. Have a Too Good weekend. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. Thanks, Eamon. Bye, Bye-bye. Eamon. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.